try some of this. Hello, Sister Dean. God bless you. Good to see you online tonight, sis. Sister King, God bless you. God bless you. Hope you all had a great day today. Let me set my phone over here somewhere. Let me get myself located here. Man, it's good to see you all coming online tonight. Amen. Amen. Sister Jackson, hello, Miss Erica. God bless you, sis. Good to see you online. Let somebody know that we're on Bible studies, getting ready to get started here. Sister Adam, Sister Guyton, bless you. Hey man, it's good to see you all coming in tonight. Uh, for Bible study, we got a wonderful lesson for you tonight, a continuation of the last past few weeks. Uh, Brother Baker, God bless you, man. Sister Baldwin, God bless you, sis. Hey Amen, God bless you, good to see you all live. Sister, uh, Brother Willie King and family. Sister Ross, hello, hello. We got to drink that water. It's good for the body. Sister Ridley, hello. Amen, amen. Good to see everyone coming in. Reach out and let somebody know that Bible study is on. What's up, Brother No? God bless you, man. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. We'll get started in just a few seconds here. What's up, Charles? God bless you, man. Good to see you online. Amen. Good to see you online. We were in uh, in Germany together. Okay. Okay. I got you. Small world, man. God bless you. Good to see you online. Sister Taylor, Sister Wilder. God bless you. Amen. Let's pray real quick. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We magnify your wonderful name. God, we give you all the praise tonight. For certainly, God, you deserve it. You're worthy of all the praise that we can muster in our spirit to tell you thank you, to tell you we appreciate you. So by your spirit tonight, open up our eyes and our ears of understanding that we might hear what your spirit is saying to the church. And in all things, we'll be careful to give you praise, to give you glory, and to give you honor. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. God bless you all. It's so good to see you all coming in. Deacon Deacon Luster, God bless you, man. Uh, um, I want. We want to continue on in our lesson. We've been going over the past um, several weeks about um, living forward in a backward world. And tonight, our lesson is um, a standard of conduct. Uh, God has called us to, um, uh, to a standard. In other words, we, we can't just live like we want to live. We can't just do what we want to do. And, and certainly, we can't just say what we want to say. Uh, we are bound by what God has told us and how God has told us that we are um, to conduct ourselves. So Paul is writing along with Timothy and um, Silas. He's writing to this young church. And on last week, we talked about how Paul was um, so beside himself that he could not find out if this young church was still holding fast uh, because he had to leave them for fear of persecution. And, and the word came back in our lesson on last week that they were holding fast, they were maintaining um, 
um, their, their focus on Christ and they were doing the things that God would have them to do. And Paul is bringing this uh, fourth um, chapter of First Thessalonians. He's nearing the end to this first letter to the church. And, 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 and Paul is giving them words of encouragement. He's, he's, he's exhorting them to do some certain things. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. Um, uh, because I believe uh, when we look at our TV, when we look at uh, how society has shaped the narrative now, particularly um, the powers that be in Hollywood or, or on um, um, TV screens, movie screens, it seems like um, there's a concerted effort to make alternative lifestyles and and certain things that are, are, are singularly contradictory to the word of God, make them acceptable. And if the church does not take a stance, if the church does not say, there's still a standard that God holds us to, anything doesn't go and, and, and we've got to abide by and live up to the standard of God. And, 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 and that's what we wanna deal with tonight. And so if you will, I, I pray everyone did their homework and read these uh, first 12 verses of this uh, fourth chapter of Thessalonians. Amen. Uh, make sure you do that if you haven't done so already. Uh, first Thessalonians chapter four, uh, make sure that you um, um, that you um, hit that um, hit that like button for me if you haven't done so already. Uh, listen, let's read the first verse and let's show you these first two verses and look at Paul's um, uh, opening to this, this church at, at Thessalonica. Uh, finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. Uh, listen, Paul opens this letter up and says, we exhort you um, in the Lord Jesus um, that you should abound, that you should be flourishing, that you should be growing, uh, just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Paul is saying, listen, we, we, we came to you, uh, we lived among you for a season of time, and, and, and while we were there, we taught you the word of God. We taught you what you're supposed to be doing. We taught you how you're supposed to be acting, how you're supposed to be living and 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 paul is saying but don't rest on that don't 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 just go to that point we want you to continue going higher uh abounding growing developing flourishing more and more and 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 and, and the baseline that that paul wants them to operate off is what they were taught uh, they were taught how to carry themselves. They were taught how to, to speak to one another. They were taught how uh, 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 to love one another. And so Paul says, just like you received it from us, how you ought to walk and how you ought to carry yourself uh, and how you are to please God. We want you to continue on in those things. We want you to continue on with the standard that God has set. And I remember when I was, growing up in my parents' house, there was a standard. You, There was a standard. I wish somebody would just say amen to that. There was a standard. You, you, you didn't just say yeah and no. Nah and you, you had to say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. That was a standard. You, you didn't grunt when you walked in the room. You spoke when you walked in the room. You, you, there was a standard that there was a level of expectation that, that you had to live up to uh, to be in their home, and 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 I know I'm not the only one there that that's on here that that had that same type standard. Uh, you you when you talk to 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 older folk, you you didn't just say anything. You didn't call somebody older by their first name. No sir, no ma'am. You always had to put a handle on their name. Yes sir, sir, Mister or or ma'am or Miss. You you had to. That was a standard that a child 
place is a child's place and, and, and you didn't mix the two. You didn't sit there and while your parents were talking and, and you sitting there looking in their mouths, what they're hearing, what they're talking. No, you knew the standard was you don't sit there in grown folks' face while they're talking. You got to go in the other room. Don't let them think that you're an earshot trying to listen and eavesdrop on what they're saying. Y'all better hear me tonight. There was a standard. There was a standard how we had to carry ourselves as as as, as children in in my parents' house, and and I want you to get this down. Paul is saying the same thing to this to this young church uh, at Thessalonica. He's he's saying there's a standard that we've established, and don't allow. Hear me. Don't allow what's going on around you. Don't allow. My mom would say, I don't care what they do at their house. When you're in this house, this would go. When you sit at my table, this is what goes. My father, this is how it is here. And, 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 and Paul is letting them know, regardless of what goes on around you in the city and, in the, and uh, on the landscape, there's a standard. There, there's a standard that you've got to abide by. And, and, and thank God that, 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 that God loves us enough to create a standard, to establish a standard for how we live. Listen, listen to what Paul says in verse number two, for, for you know what commandments we gave you uh, through the Lord Jesus. Y'all better catch this right. This, this just tripped me out when I, when I read this uh, uh, because, because my mama would always say, you know what I told you. <laughs> you, you, you understood what I said. And, and there'll be times when, when she was correcting me or uh, 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 whooping me or whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, she would stop in the middle of it and say, now, what did I tell you? Because she understood, you knew what the commandment, you knew what the standard, you knew what the instruction was. And Paul is saying to this young church, uh, uh, you know what the commandments we gave you through. You know what God's expectations are. And, and can I tell you, there's a lot of stuff that we do now in the body that 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 we know better. We 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 simply know better. I, I don't care what you say. Nobody ever tell you know. There's a consciousness of God that should be operating in all of us. That you know certain things are not natural. Certain things are are not in order. Certain things. There's a there's there's uh, what's called the 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 consciousness of concealment. When when you when 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 people commit a crime. Uh, you, you can't say, I just didn't know that that was against the law. What, what tells on you is not the crime, but how you acted after the crime. When you try to cover up what you did, when you try to conceal what you did, it shows a consciousness of thought and it shows a, an awareness that what you did was wrong or was not right. And, and so Paul says, you know what commandments we gave you. Good God Almighty, you you know, and there there is an expectation, and I believe the church needs to go back to 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 establishing and 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 requiring at that same kind of expectation. Listen, listen, ministry today. Can I just tell you this right here? Ooh, ooh. Can I just tell you this right here that God still requires holiness. Mm -hmm. He says, be holy as I am holy. And, and, and can I tell you, uh, uh, when you disagree with what God's word says, I don't care who's preaching it or who's teaching it. When you disagree with it, I just don't think that's right. I just don't agree with that. I, 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 that that's old folk. That's antiquated. That's, that's old timey. When, when, you, when that's your stance, when that's your retort, when that's how you come back, then what your issue is, it is not with that individual that's teaching or ministering that word. Your real problem is with God himself because God says that I have established a standard and I have an expectation on your life that, that, that you got to live up to what I have said. -wee. Now let's look at this thing and see what God said here. Paul said, listen, God's will, God's will, uh, uh, and, and, and watch this right here, the will of God. He, 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 he talks about the will of God. Uh, and, 
And when we talk about the will of God, let, let me let me put verse three of it so you can see what I'm talking about. Verse three says, listen what it says. Come on up for me. Amen. Let me see what's going on here. Verse three said, I'll have to read it. I don't know why this thing is not is not responding now. But verse three says, verse three says, it says, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor. Now, Paul moves and gives this word now and says, listen, I want, I, I want you to understand that when we talk about the will of God, we, we're not talking about uh, just Paul encouraging us to do what God said. But, we're, but what we're talking about is the will of God establishes that this is not just a suggestion, but this is a command of God. And so Paul says, I am encouraging you to abide by and live up to the command of God. So Paul, listen, Paul issues a three-point or three-part command. Listen to what he says in this verse. Listen to what he says in this verse. He says, the first thing is be sanctified. Woo, there it is. He said, you, you've got to be sanctified. And, and, and when I was growing up, there was a church down the street from my grandparents' house. And, and, and boy, we called it the sanctified church because the name was about, took up half of the front of the building. And, and 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 it was just a long, long name. And we were like, oh my God, they'd be beating the drums and rubbing the rub board and all that stuff. And we said, that's just that sanctified church. Not understanding that, that God was calling us all to be sanctified, not a denomination. Hear me tonight. But he's calling us to be set apart. He, he calls us to be set apart. He calls us to be set apart unto God. And what that is, is when we get saved, it, it's an event, it's threefold. It's an event, it's a progression, and it's ultimate when we get saved. When you got saved, God saved you right there. And then from the point of salvation, God begins to sanctify you. In other words, he begins the process of making you more like him, more like Christ. So that's why, that's why when you get saved, you still you still do some of the things that you did prior to being saved. You still still have to wrestle with some of the same things because God is sanctifying you. He's stripping off some of those things that that were in your life or part of your being before you got saved. And so what he does is he begins to to scrub you and, and, and to and to polish you and to heat you and, and to draw out of you those things that are not like him. As the refiner puts the ore on the on the fire, so does God when He sanctifies us. Here, here now, here now, Paul says, "Your your your command is to be sanctified." Now, watch watch what this means. This means that that you've got to make a conscious decision not to try to be like you used to be. Oh my goodness! Th this means that you've got to make a conscious and a deliberate choice not to be like you used to be. In other words, if I am going to agree and become a cohort in what God is doing in my life, that means that I've got to, I've got to make some changes. I've got to align myself with what God is trying to usher me into. Here I am now. Here I am now. God is sanctifying me. He's telling me, you got to change how you speak. You got to change how you think. You got to change how you react. You got to, and, and he begins to set a course of actions in front of me that I've got to walk out. And every day that I'm walking, I'm walking further away from where I used to be, from how I used to act, how I used to carry on. The problem with too many of us is that we are still just like we used to be. The problem is we still speak like we used to speak. The problem is we're still going where we used to go. And God is saying, you, you, Paul is saying to this young church, he says, you've got to understand the will of God. And that will is you set yourself apart, that, that, that you don't engage in the things that you used to do. Oh, God, that's, that's where we have to grow to, church. And, and, and sometimes 
we we beat up on young folk. We beat up on people in Christ because they're still early on in their Christian. They're still early on in their walk with God. And they have issues that they're trying to grow through. They have process and they have proclivities that they're still trying to wrestle with. And here you are now. You've been saved forever in a day, and you're pointing your finger at somebody who just got saved. And, 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 but 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 watch this. You, you, you've got to understand that it's a progressive work. It's a progressive uh, uh, process that God takes us through that ultimately brings us more in line with godliness and with holiness. And so Paul says, Paul says, his will is for your sanctification. Then listen to what he said. He says, he said, and you should abstain from sexual immorality. He's talking about uh, sexual relationships that were, during Paul's day, were accepted as the norm in their pagan culture. Uh, 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 in the first century church, there was what was called um, ceremonial prostitution. Uh, it was a part of the worship experience where they would praise God on one side and then they would go over and indulge their flesh on the other side of the temple. And and, and here they are now, uh, uh, fornication, adultery, these things were common practice in Paul's day. And Paul says, you've got to abstain. I know what the culture says. I know what everybody says. Hey, that's just how we do it. I, I know what, uh, how, hey, hey, look, hey, this is the standard, this is the age, this this is the, hey, we, we do what we want to do, we, we just have a good time, but Paul is writing to this church, and Paul is saying, you've got to come out from that situation, you've got to, you've got to take a stance, and you've got to abstain from that, even though it is popular culture, can I tell you, some of the things that we're engaging in, in the church, in our lives, in our personal lives, we do it simply because it is popular culture. And we think that just because the world accepts it, that it is okay with God. But God's standard, hear me now, God's standard is still his standard. He says, I expect you to be holy. I expect you to, to abstain, to, to, to restrain yourself. Watch this right here. Listen, listen what he says in verse number three. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in verse number four. He, he says, he says, listen what he says. Each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. In other words, Paul says, you've got to learn how to control yourself. You, 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 you've got to learn how to control yourself. You, you've got to learn how to tell yourself no. You, you've got to tell, you've got to learn how to walk away. You've got to learn how to close your own mouth. You've got to learn how to, 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 to control and discipline, establish a standard that is mirror to what God said, and then abide by that yourself. Oh, my God. You, you've got to abide by his standard, and part of his standard is self-control. Oh, you, you. Just because, just because you get that itch, don't mean you meet. You need to go get a scratch. Just, just because somebody is is looking, doesn't mean you need to return. Paul says you got to learn how to control yourself. Control yourself. And 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 watch this. When we get to verse five, Paul contrasts what the world says, what the world does, and, and listen to what he says. He 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 contrasts how 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 the world does things versus how we are told to do things. He said the world is passionate with lust. He said, don't be lustful like the heathens, like the people that don't even know God. Uh, uh, you you got to operate. you got to carry yourself in such a way that you understand that, that my God, uh, 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 this thing is it, 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 it's, it's about discipline in your, yourself. You know, there's a standard, there's a part of us that says, um, just live. And you only live once. Just live. Just have a good time. Just live. And, 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 and take off the glove. Take off the restraints. But, but how many know 
that Paul is trying to keep this church on track. And Paul says, you've got to bring those passionate and, and, and that lust, you've got to bring those things under control. Now get this right here. Those issues will always be a part of our humanity. Can I tell you this right here? Let, let me tell you this right here. See, somebody put this on the comment line for me. Your flesh never gets saved. Put that on the comment line. Your flesh, because some of you are thinking that, that man, I'm just a devil. I'm just this and I'm that because your flesh is still acting up. Your flesh never gets saved. Your flesh never gets saved. In other words, uh, uh, your soul is saved, but your flesh is not. What does that mean, Pastor? If you're hungry, your body does not care if you bought the food or you stole it. It says, feed me. Because your body does not care about those things. When, 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 when you have a sexual urge, your body doesn't care if it's your husband or your spouse, your wife. Your body says, satisfy this urge. It doesn't care who you use or what you use as long as you satisfy that urge. So Paul is saying, listen, you've got to discipline yourself because there's a part of you that never will be saved. Your flesh will never be saved. And if you trust your flesh, your flesh will always lead you contrary to what God wants you to do because your flesh is at enmity or at war against the spirit. The, your, your flesh wants nothing to do with the things of God. That's why, beloved, that's why when you open your Bible to read it, the first thing you do is start yawning because your flesh is, oh, man, we better go to sleep. I don't want to hear nothing. Because if I listen to this stuff, then all of a sudden now you're going to put me in handcuffs. If, if I let you take this word in, now you're going to start telling me what I can't do and what I can't have and what I can't engage in. So so he says, he says, you've got to you've got to wrestle with and bring yourself under control and you've got to put yourself in a position where you can control and discipline your own selves. Woo! Help me preach this thing tonight. See, see, because, can I tell you this right here? We, we, we have this thing in the church that where we think uh, 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 there are only certain sins that God cares about. You know, if I'm not smoking and drinking and 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 and, and some kind of sexual sin, boy, I'm, I must be doing all right. I must be I must be be holding on. I, I'm, I'm doing all right, but that's not the truth. God still, God still is concerned, and Paul is saying, "Listen, there are other sins that God absolutely is offended by, but but Paul says, I want you to understand these things. But listen." In verse 6, I want you all to see this. Paul also shows on equal footing because some folks will start thinking, well, I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't do that. I don't do that. Listen to what Paul said. Paul shows concern for the brother, for a brother in verse number 6. Look what he says. No one, no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. See, here, here you are. Paul is saying, you over here fornicating and doing all these other different things. But Paul said, he said, but equal to equally wrong is the person who may not be doing those, oh, those sexual sins. But he said, but on the other hand, you over here mistreating folk. You over here taking advantage of folk. Here you are over here uh, uh, getting over and scheming and plotting against people. So Paul says, you have no room because those things are an affront to God. And he says, just like the sexual thing God doesn't like. God also does not like you mistreating one another. Y'all better hear me tonight because there are some folk who think I don't do the big three, so I'm all right. But you just as nasty and conniving as you want to be. 
you you just as underhanded and 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 you do all kind of things and and sometimes you don't do the other stuff because you can't do it no more. But you you would if you could. You you would if you could if you had an opportunity you would try it. But but the day has passed and gone and you don't have the chance now. And so now your claim to fame is is what you don't do. Come on somebody, help me, help me, God. He said he said but but in verse six he says don't wrong your brother. Don't take advantage of him. And if we're going to live forward in this backward world, then we've got to understand the standard of God is that we've got to discipline ourselves. And then we've got to make sure that we don't handle one another wrong. How in the world are we going to be in the same body, in the same church, in the same body of Christ, and we're just dogging each other out? And we're still cutting the food with one another. How? Paul is saying, not so. He's you got if you're gonna live forward, if you're gonna move forward, you you gotta have a discipline that you apply to your own self. Because God is trying to 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 to, to sanctify you. God is trying to make you more like him. But 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 Paul said, you you got to deal with those things. You got to confront those things. You got to understand why, why are you so hateful? Come on, somebody. Why are you so mean spirited? Why? Paul says you got to deal with those things that cause you to wound other people. You just say anything to them. You just do all that. He said no one should wrong his brother. And there's a multitude of things that we can do to wrong somebody. You lie on them. You. You, you, you misrepresent what they said. You, 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 you put stuff out there that you know wasn't true. Paul said, you, you know you're wrong. And then watch this right here. Listen to what he says. That's in the, in the A clause of verse six. But look what he says in the B clause. He says, because the Lord is the avenger of all such. Who? The people that's been wronged. The people that, that, that's been hurt. The people that have been used. God is the avenger of all such. In other words, everyone who's in those things that we just talked about, God says, you're going to have to deal with me on that. And he says, so as, as we also forewarn you and testify. Here now, Paul said, this is nothing new. We told you. We laid it out to you. We, 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 we spared no effort in making sure you understood. And there are people who 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 absolutely know what they're saying and doing is wrong, but there's still a part of you that needs to be brought under subjection. It doesn't mean you're not saved. It doesn't mean that you don't love God. It just means that that part of your flesh is out of control. It could be your mouth. It could be the rest of you. You're, you're out of control. Listen to what he said. Verse seven says, he says, for God did not cause call us to to uncleanness but to holiness. There it is. Therefore, therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has given us his what? Holy Spirit. Remember last night, if you were online last night, I, I, I shared with you that the things that God requires of us are the things that require his divine assistance. He said, Thessalonica, church at Thessalonica, he said, listen, I want you to understand the reason God is telling you you can do this hard task. I know what society says. I know that that you've always engaged in these ceremonial prostitutes and the and the sexual acts that you 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 that's been a part of your whole life. He said, but now God is telling you there there's a change that's taking place. And, and, and now the Holy Ghost is operating in you. And as a result of the Holy Spirit operating in you, now you can control yourself and you can dictate how you're going to handle other people, how you're going to deal with other people. Because he, the third person in the Godhead, he, the same one that raised Jesus from the dead, he, the Holy Spirit, is now given to us to aid us, to equip us, to empower us to do what we could not do and probably would never do of our own volition. And, and, and so Paul is saying to the church, he said, if you're going to keep moving forward, don't you reject what God is telling you. 
I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know you don't want to hear it. I know it contradicts what you've always done. I know it doesn't sound like what they taught you back then. But Paul said, if you reject what, what's being told you, you're not rejecting a man, but you're rejecting God. And there are some on this live tonight. You, 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 I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear. No, God is saying you're not rejecting the instructor. You're not in rejecting the pastor or the teacher. You're rejecting God. And God has given us his spirit. Ooh, help me tonight. Let's look at let's look at this right here. So, so this is Paul establishing and reinforcing the standard. Green Grove, if, if we're going to move forward in this ministry and, and in this walk with God, just like this church at Thessalonica, Paul is telling us we've got to have a standard of holiness in our lives, that, that we're going to walk together, we're going to serve together, that we're going to uh, worship together. And it matters how you treat people. It matters what you say and how you say it. Everything that comes to your head should not come out your mouth. I, I'm just telling you. And so Paul is saying, listen, Paul shifts now and he starts talking about harmony. He's talked about holiness, but now Paul shifts in verse 9 through 12 and he starts talking about harmony. See, see, the, the, the second dominant feature uh, in the cultural landscape itself. See, you, 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 you got... You've got to understand that 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 what's in you is what you're going to live. What's in you is how you're going to operate. Out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. There are things that are in you that are that are are, are, are in you that, that that have to be dealt with and have to be filtered through the word of God to make sure that it is pleasing unto God. Listen. If we're going to move forward uh, uh, to God's ideal place, that then then we need to make sure we understand how to address the subject of love. Mm. How do I love? How do I love? Because the 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 teaching that Paul is giving is counter uh, to what we we many times consider love today, because. The love we take today is more on a self-emphasis. It's about what I think, how I feel, what I want, my ambition. It, 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 but it takes no one else into consideration. Let's look at what, what he says in verse number nine. But he says, but concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. Ooh, God. Look look at look at what he says. And indeed verse 11, verse 10 and indeed you do toward all brethren who are who are all who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you brethren, here it is, to increase more and more. Paul says Paul says you understand how to love one another. And he says to the church at Thessalonica, he said, I want you to understand, I'm not telling you that you need to, you need to start loving. He said, it, your record already bears for you that you already love, that, that you love the people, not only in your church, but you love the people in your region, the region of Macedonia. He, he says, he said, but don't stop there. Don't stop there. Increase the love more and more. If, if we're going to, to walk in the things of God, that, then we've got to learn how to not be satisfied with just a little bit that we're doing. Oh, my goodness. We, we've got to learn how to increase. If you look, how, how, how difficult is it to love them that love you? How, how difficult is it? To, to give to those who give to you. There, there, there's no challenge in that. The real challenge is to love the unlovely. The real challenge is to love people that have wronged you. The real challenge is to love people the way God expects us to love them. And so Paul is saying, I want you 
brethren, I want you to increase the love that you have. Yes, you love. Yes, you've shown your love. Yes, you do all these things that we've talked about. But now I want you to, to expand it. Green Grove, we love one another. For the most part, we treat one another right. But if we're going to go forward, God is saying we've got to expand and increase what we're doing more and more. The things that are of God, increase it more and more. The things that are pleasing to God, increase them more and more. We've got to urge one another to love. We've got to urge one another to do the will of God. We've got to urge one another to satisfy the, the desires of God. That's what he's saying. You, you're not going to move forward as long as you're trying to do what's comfortable. You, you're just loving me and mine and your little house and your little family. And, 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 and that's it. Paul said, you, 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 you got to love the brethren. You got to treat people how you want to be treated. You, you got you to gotta go out of your way sometimes to love people. And can I tell you this, as quiet as it kept, sometimes you're going to love people that don't love you back. Sometimes you're going to love people that do not love you back. And Paul is saying, but you've got to increase it. Now that love that you're giving, it costs you something. Now that now that 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 sacrifice that you made, it costs you something. And that's what Paul is laying out to this young church. That listen, if you're gonna love, do it till it costs you something. Somebody put that on the comment line for me. If you're gonna love, do it until it costs you something. If you if you're gonna serve God, do it till it costs you something. If you're gonna walk with do it till it costs. And what and what we're doing with God now, most of the time, doesn't cost us anything. We we do what's convenient. We don't do anything sacrificial. We we don't we don't we don't do that. No 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 no. no. But Paul said Paul said you got to increase more and more. In other words, stop 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 rejoicing over yesterday's bread, yesterday's accomplishment. More and more. I got to keep growing. I got to keep expanding our territory. Now, now I want you all to see this. He talked to them how they lived in verse 11, 12, last two, but last two verses, and we're going to be finished for tonight. Paul talks to them about how they lived. How, how, how do I love people? How do I expand myself more and more? Watch this right here now. I'm about to give you the answer to the test. How do I increase my love my adherence to god's standard more and more as it relates to the brethren watch this boy this thing ooh, ooh. some of y'all watch this right here look at what he says in verse number 11. he says that you also aspire to lead a quiet life to mind your own business <laughs> and to work with your own hands as we commanded you look at what he says look at what he says and that you walk that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing look at this right here first thing paul tells them that if you want to increase more and more if you want to increase, if you, ex you you've got to learn how to lead a peaceful life. So, some of us, my God, everything you do is rush, 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 running, running, running. Oh, I got to go. I got to, you, everything. You, you, you come into church thinking about, well, I, I got to hurry and get out of here. You just walked in the church and you're already talking about what you got to do when you leave. You can't even uh, turn off. The outside, when you come inside the house of God and, 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 and prepare yourself for corporate worship because your life is so unrestful that, that everything with you, you can't enjoy it now because you're worried about tomorrow. You, 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 you can't even worry. You can't even deal with everything is rush, rush, rush. Paul says you've got to aspire. You've got to aspire to have a restful or a peaceful life a quiet life my god 
Why are you always in an uproar? Why are you always running yourself ragged? Why is it? Paul said, he said, the reason why you can't abound and increase more and more is because you don't know how to be quiet. Good God Almighty. <laughs> he, you don't know how to, every, you just always running off at the mouth. You're always running up and down the street. You're always running here. I got to go here. I need to go do that. And I, you're just running, running. And he's saying, you got to have a quiet life. My God, a quiet life. Slow down. Stop trying to keep up with society. Everything changed. Here you are, you running. A new phone comes out. Now your old phone, I don't want this anymore. I got to go get a new one. Everything, every, a new car comes out. Nothing is wrong with what you're driving. Oh, I got to go get me some, uh-uh, uh, this thing don't even ride. Everything with you is always rushed, disquieted. Your spirit, you see something. You got something nice, but they got something nice too. Now you want what they have. Quiet, peaceful life. Lead a restful life. <laughs> and Paul said, how do you do that? How do you do that? Mind your own business. There it is. <laughs> Here it is. If you want to show love to folks, stay out of their business. If you want to show that you really could stay out of other folks' business, good Lord, why are you always in you you're in your children' business trying to control what they do? You got your own house, your children got their own house, and you're trying to run your house and theirs. Mind your own business. You on the job, and folk don't like you not because. Not because you, you're an unproductive worker. They don't like you because you won't mind your own business. Paul said, if you're going to if you're gonna grow and, and abound and increase more and more, mind your own business. Shut your mouth sometime. Stay in your lane sometime. Get the hush mouth sometime. Everything you see is not for you to comment on. Everything that God brings to your attention, sometimes it is merely meant for you to pray. Petition God on their behalf. If it's wrong, lay before God on their behalf. But mind your own business. Mind your own business. I got. I can't say that enough. If you love them, why are you all in their business? I, that's why I'm in the business. No, it's not. That's why you got all of this hell in your house because you mining everybody else's stuff but your own. And so Paul tells this church at, at, at Thessalonica, he says in this 11th verse of this fourth chapter, he says, aspire to lead a quiet life and to mind your own. Boy, you can't say that enough. Good God. You got to learn how to mind your own business, people. Hey, man, you, you, you telling everybody what they need. Mind your own business. You trying to tell that woman how to take care of her husband. You trying to tell that man what he need to be doing for his wife. Mind your own business. You ain't got one. And you still talking. Come on, somebody. Mind your own business. Mind your own business. That's what Paul is saying. Mind your own. I can't stop. I just want to just sit there and just run around this desk right now. Mind your own business. You wouldn't have got hit if you'd have mind your own business. You wouldn't have got cussed out if you'd have mind your own business. You wouldn't have got left out if you'd have mind your own it, That's why they don't invite you. That's why they don't call you. That's why they don't ask you for advice because you don't know how to mind your own business. And so Paul instructs this church, this body of believers, mind your own business. If it ain't got nothing to do with you, why are you talking about it? Why are you over there worrying about it? Choir members over here trying to tell the ushers what to do. Come on now. Come on. Ushers over here trying to tell the praise team how to do their job. Mind your own business. Do what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Paul said, listen to what he said. Let me go on lest, lest, lest I make somebody mad. Let, let me go on lest I make somebody mad. Watch this right here. Let me show you. And Paul says in this, in this, in this same verse, he says, and to work with your own hands. There it is. Work with your own hands as we commanded you. If you remember when we started this series, Paul said, Paul said, we came to you and we decided not to be a burden on you. 
we didn't operate and 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 have you do everything that we could have lawfully under the word asked you to do for us paul said we we provided for ourselves as not to be a burden on the church now i want to say this because there are some folk let me let me make sure i say this the right way because there are some folk who don't want to do anything for the leader who don't want to do anything for the pastor who don't want to do anything for that under shepherd you you, you need to get delivered paul is saying listen paul is saying he said he said we didn't want to be a burden on you and Paul, what was happening was, sure and, and, and what and what was happening was this here. Watch this. They had talked so much about Christ returning. They talked so much about the second coming of Christ that Paul said, he said, I need to confront this thing because some people were not going to work. They, they said, no, I don't need to go get myself yoked with no job. I, I don't need to go get tangled up with no with no employment and working a business and doing all that day to day that Monday. I don't need, because the Lord is coming back, and so they refuse to go to work. They refuse to do anything, and as a result, they were living off the other saints. Ah, oh, listen to what he said. They were living off of the other saints. They, 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 they were saying, we're not going to do this on our own. No, we're not going to do it. No. And Paul says, absolutely not. Just because Christ is coming, it doesn't mean you don't need to be out there taking care of your own physical needs. So Paul said, in the last thing he says in this verse, in this, in this section, he says, be self-supporting. He said, don't, don't be able-bodied and then refuse to work, want to mooch and, and, and leech off of other people. He said, he said, he said, work with your own hands. You want to eat, don't you? And if you remember in 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 uh, 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 in, in, in Second Thessalonians, I think it was three and ten, Paul said, uh, if a man doesn't eat or doesn't work, he don't eat. And he was addressing that mentality that said, we we're not gonna work because we think the Lord is coming back anytime. But but you still wanted to eat though, and you wanted other people to subsidize your choices and there are many people in the body of christ right now who are making conscious decisions that 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 are impacting the welfare and the financial bottom line of other folk because you're too lazy to support your own self no sir you got too many parents right now hear me tonight if you won't hear you got too many of you all that that are on here you are. You 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 worked all your life. You supported those kids. You've done everything you needed to do, and now here you are. They're grown, able-bodied, and sometimes with their own children, and you're out here mortgaging your future, trying to take care of some grown, uh, won't do nothing kids. You got to be crazy. No, ma'am. No, sir. Paul said you got to work by your own hands, and if you don't want to work, then why am I feeding you then? If you don't want to work, why is somebody taking care of you? That's what he's saying. That's what Paul is saying. You've got to confront those things. And, 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 and I know that's a hard thing to hear, but I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to work all my life and then take care of some grown kids. I'm not going to do that. That's not going to happen. I, my kids know it. Don't even look at me like, I'll help you. I'll be a safety net for you if you need. I'm not going to let my kids be destitute. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, if you're able to work, you, you you need to be out here hitting them corners just like everybody else. You need to be out here taking care of yourself just like everybody else. That's what Paul is saying. You're sitting up here. You, you got all this energy to lay up with folk. That's what Paul is saying. You got all this energy to do people dirty and do them wrong. But then you over here won't work to take care of yourself. Mm -mm. Paul said, not so. Paul said, you got to support yourself. You got to support yourself. And, 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 and that's called tough love. I don't care. About that's just tough love. I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and what I'm supposed to have to carry me on after retirement. And when I get in my upper years. Now I'm, I'm giving it to some child that, that's able to go get a job, but won't keep a job. No, sir. You, you, no, ma'am. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. And you're not going to come lay up in my house. Woo! I know it. Let the pastor talk. I, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. 
No, you're able to do it. I'm not talking about somebody that, that needs help and need. No, they're able, but they won't do it. And you keep, you keep, you keep undergirding that dysfunction because you won't make them do what they're capable of doing for themselves. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, ma'am. No, sir. Paul, Paul told his church, if Paul could tell the church that, certainly I could tell my family that. Certainly I could tell my household that. If you're able, you're going to have to get out of here. You got to do something. And, and, and that's that's a phenomenon in our culture. That That is something that's going on in our culture. And, 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 and uh, preacher, you're right. Um, you're right. It's crippling them. It's crippling them. You're so busy trying to give them what you didn't have that you don't give them what you did have. You're so busy trying to provide for them what you didn't have when you grew up that you don't pour into them what you did have. My parents taught me love. My parents taught me responsibility. They taught me, you got to work, son. They taught me, you got to handle your business. And my wife will tell you, one of my greatest fears that I've wrestled with all of my married life is that, God, I would not be able to take care of my family. Man, I don't want to hear that. Whatever I had to do, I got to work two, three, four jobs. I don't care. I, I got to be a man and take care of mine. That's why I have zero tolerance for a man that won't take care of his children. Don't talk to me about the system. Don't talk to me about that. You got to take care of yours. That's got your name on it. That's got your blood. Take care of it. So Paul says, be self-supporting. You're able to do it. But you want to lay up and want somebody else to do for you what you could do for yourself. Can I just stop right here? Can I just stay this right here? Same thing go for the church. Same thing go for the church. Because I, I, I've been around the church. I've been in ministry 41 years. I, I've been around the church a few days, y'all. And I'm going to tell you right now, you got some people out there that don't won't think a second about pimping the church. They don't, they, 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 there's no shame in it. Whatever they can squeeze out, whatever they can manipulate, if they got a lie to get it, they'll tell any kind of lie to get something out of the church. That's why we got to make sure. Benevolent and all that stuff that we talk about. You got to make sure you don't just, just do stuff. What, 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 what are you doing? I remember when we changed that policy at the church, folks, certain folks was up in arms. No, 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 no. We got an 80-20 policy here. Uh-uh, uh-uh. This church ain't going to just pay, pay your stuff. Like, no, no, man. What do you got? You got to bring something to the table, too. You're not going to sit back up here and this fat cat off the church. And you're not, you're not doing what you can do for your own self. That's just right. That's just right. And that's what Paul is saying. He said, you got you to gotta do this. Work with your own hands. Amen. And so if we're going to move forward, Green Grove, in this backward world, then we've got to we got to take this stance where where we where we understand that God has a standard. He expects us to abide by this standard of conduct, how we carry ourselves, how we love one another. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to bring our flesh under control, under subjection. He wants us to make sure we handle other people right. That, that, that we are concerned with other brothers and not trying to take advantage of them. That, 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 that we understand in order to have harmony in the body, it requires that I, 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 I don't put myself at the center of everything. I've got to learn how to look out for other people as well. I've got to learn how to love other people and make sure other people in the body are taken care of. The Bible says in Acts they had all things in common. In other words, they made sure everybody was taken care of because everybody was doing their part. And that's where we're going to have to go forward. And that's where we're going to have to make sure 
We are abiding by it because if we don't, then we'll miss out on what God is saying in this last day for this church. Amen. We're going to keep moving forward. Amen. Um, um, in this backward world. Now, let me give you an assignment for next week. Let me give you this assignment for next week. Somebody put this on the comment line for me. Your assignment next week for next week is to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Here it is. Chapter 4, verse 13 through verse 18. That's what we'll talk about on next on next Wednesday night of the Lord allow life to last. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through verse 18. And, and we're going to continue on. We And we're going to talk about how to take a load off your mind next week. This is what Paul is going to talk to this church about. How do we take a load off our mind? Uh, so that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through verse number 18. I pray this lesson has been a blessing to you. Uh, I would that you would share it. Uh, uh, make sure you hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Amen. Um, make sure you hit that like button for me if you haven't done so already. Um, I appreciate you guys doing that. Uh, let me open this thing back up here. Uh, okay. Hey, man, it's so good to see everybody online tonight. Hit that like button so I'll know you were in online with me tonight. Hey, man. Um, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Awesome word. Amen. Thank you all so much for your attention tonight and for uh, your, your, your presence. Um, we had a wonderful lesson on last night. And uh, we're just thankful to God for that. Amen. And we're inviting you this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday, um, to be here this coming Sunday um, for our, our our morning service. It starts at 10 o'clock. We're going to have a hallelujah good time. Um, 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 this Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Amen. Um, and we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do this thing and have a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. Please, ma'am, and please, sir, be here at 10 o'clock for our morning worship. And then um, during uh, that afternoon at 1.30, we're going to be back here. We're going to invite everyone. we got folks coming from around the middle Georgia area to help us uh, uh, celebrate our choirs and our uh, music ministry at 1.30. We're going to have a, a, a gospel concert uh, celebrating our choirs. Amen. At 1.30 at Green Grove, we don't want people to come to our church, our house, our, our, uh, our place of worship, and we not be here. So let's make plans to be in the house at 1.30 um, uh, on Sunday afternoon um, so we can have a, a wonderful time in the Lord. Um, Pastor Askew, Dr. Askew, and, and Friendship will be meeting at the same time on the other side. Um, um, so we invite you to please, ma'am, and please, sir, come on out uh, and have a good time in the name of the Lord. Amen. So God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. Stay encouraged and remember God loves you, but God still has a standard. He still has a standard that we have to live up to. It was wonderful seeing you all online tonight. God bless you and God keep you as my prayer. McIntosh out.